We rock it, we rock it, get with us. Business and Management, Dallas, Texas. My radio station. We are KSBM Radio, the voice of Town View. Hello, guys. Welcome back to KSBM Radio, the voice of Town View. This is KB. I'm Mo. I'm Jody. And we have a special guest, guys, for our first show back. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I am Marcus Nickerson. Nice to meet nice you. Time. This is our first guest first on the show. First, uh, first show, had to come back, switch things up a little bit, you know. So, how are you guys doing this morning? Everything good? Everybody checking in? Yes. Yes, yeah, but good. the rain was unexpected. I know, I didn't see that coming. I, The, the thing, like, I swear, in my, wherever I live, I live by, like, Mesquite. Nobody knows how to drive already. So then <laughs> when you add rain to it, it's just like, was okay. Was it traffic? Here we go again. Yeah, as always. I didn't have bad traffic. Did you have a hard time getting over here? Man, don't even get me started. <laughs> so, you're on Mesquite. I'm over on the Forney side. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. that's Forney? far. That's far. Um, and you're right. You know, a lot of people, I guess, I don't know if that's a Texas thing, though. It is a Texas yeah. thing. Yeah. So, other than that, everything's been cool. Mm-hmm. How about you, Jody? Well, the bus was kind of late, and yeah. the traffic was pretty bad. But I got here on time. So, that's yeah. all that matters. I wanted to come to school today because today's Friday, and for everybody listening, Coastal Town View today is advisory day, and we're going to be talking about clubs and everything. So, you guys have any clubs that you're getting into? I am. So, right now I'm doing academic decathlon, mm-hmm. and then I want to do, was it academic UIL? Oh, yeah, yeah. I did it last year. It was actually pretty fun. Uh, I only did one competition because everything else was pretty hard, uh, but I did get fourth. I was so close oh, to being third. Okay, I'm also on the podium. Mm-hmm. This year, this year, even on the podium. Yes, we have um, I joined the club called Project Kin, and I'm going to join another one called Lulac. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I've heard about Kin. It's like community service, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Mm, I was thinking about joining that, but I'm going to probably spend most of the time in the basketball club that we're starting. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's so, fun. yeah, shout out to a fellow <laughs> radio member who started it. Um, so, basically, we're going to, the upperclassmen are going to be in charge of it. It's gonna, we're going to have our own small teams, organize it. Um, with underclassmen, and if we want, we can join in too, but we're going to be playing actual games, schedules, whenever we meet up. So it's going to be a whole ordeal. We're going to oh, get really involved It's in also that. college day, or what is it? We just yeah, it's college. College day. So during uh, lunch, lunch, we're going to go upstairs on by the EVD on the third floor. Mm-hmm. They have all the stores and stuff. It's, yeah. it, it, it looks nice. There's a new store. Looks- this uh, girl is selling aguas frescas. Oh, really? Okay. And strawberry and brownies. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, are any of you involved with uh, BPA or FBLA or DECA? I want to get involved with BPA, but we also, this year, we're doing Skills USA. Okay, yeah. Skills, yeah. For mm-hmm. podcast and... Mm-hmm. Um, That's what we're all going to be in. Everybody's doing Skills. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Townview has a very strong Skills USA program. Mm-hmm. Very strong. Yeah, we're going to keep it going. <laughs> we have different events that we're going to be in. I believe I'm going to be in a podcast with another radio member. And we had to create, we had to do the script, and then we're going to have to do the audio and then edit it. We had to do all of that in, the, like, six hours. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's it's a, a lot. It's a it's lot. So but I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be making a short film, I to believe, three to five minutes with another fellow, a fellow radio member, two-person thing. And I'm pretty sure we have to, like, you know, uh, make our storyboard, set up the video. It has to be, I'll uh, use their editing software, so get used to using that and i'm looking forward to it because making videos is pretty fun like we have experience with like uh filming here so i think we'll do pretty good uh mine is still yet to be decided (laughs) but i'm hoping to do it with a partner yeah i want to do a partner too because we're going to be traveling out i don't want to be by myself the whole time i want to have somebody to talk to (laughs) yeah hey you know what the good thing is that all of you are considering being in organizations 
because uh, mm-hmm. that is a very big deal, you know, especially within career and technical uh, education. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are, I'm a former DECA advisor. Oh, right? yeah. And I know you have a very strong DECA program mm-hmm. here at Town View as well. So you guys got good options. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. I also want to get in for other clubs. I forgot to say, I was in BSU last year. And I don't know when that's going to start up again. And then I was also in Bible study. And there's another one, but I can't remember. I try to stay involved in the school, keep there's myself busy. There's a club for Bible study? Yes, there is. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Then, uh, what's it called? BSU? That always has so many people. Oh, that. BSU is, yeah, Black Student <laughs> Union. Yeah. We had meetings every every other week. Mm-hmm. So it will be on Thursday. And we would talk about different topics and conversations. Uh, controversial co- topics. It was really fun to get together with uh-huh. people I know, also of my color. Cool. Yeah, and what then about Lulek? 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 Uh No, this is gonna be my first time joining, so I'm not sure yet, but I'm excited. Oh. Yeah. Uh, my friend is actually the president of Lulek, and it's kind of similar to BSU, but for a Latino community. Mm-hmm. And they also, you know, they, I think they have a couple of field trips planned. They go around, you know, uh, basically doing similar things to BSU did, does, but they're trying to get more more attendance, so it's a good thing that you're going. Yeah. Because la- last year they were pretty good in the beginning, but then it started trimming down. All right. Well, this will wrap up our small talk. We'll be right back with a short little interview with Mr. Nickerson. Stay tuned. Here's another hot topic to discuss. Live on KSBM Radio, the voice of Townview. Hey guys, we're back with the interview. This is KB. I'm Mo. I'm Jody. And, and I'm Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Our special guest. Today. Who we're going to be interviewing today. So, Mr. Nickerson, for those of you who don't know, is the. CTE director over the IT, well, correct? Oh, okay, well, so I'm one of the CTE coordinators. Yeah, coordinators, coordinators. Yeah, uh, with Dallas ISD. Mm-hmm. Um, been with the district, man, going on 10 years. 10 uh, years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I, I didn't see this coming. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um, I imagine I should kind of tell a little bit about myself. Yeah, yes. get it for everybody. Okay, Listen. cool, cool. Well... You know, I am from a uh, good old state of Mississippi. I hail state from uh, Mississippi State University. Oh, really? Okay. Right. So, um, you know, graduated from a place called Kosciuszko that sounds nothing like the way it's probably spelled. <laughs> Had no idea that I was going to eventually go into education. Uh, I went to college to get my undergrad degree in psychology. Mm-hmm. And psychology is what I actually appreciate the most. Uh-huh. Uh, had an advisor there. I'm going to give him a shout out by the name of Dr. Carskadden. And Dr. Carskadden and I had a conversation one day about careers. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I used to work for Walmart and he was telling me, hey, you know, man, you can uh, potentially go to school and get an MBA and only do about two years and come out making more money mm-hmm. because I was looking at going into this thing called IO psychology. Mm-hmm. So I only thing I heard was, you know, short time and make more money. And that's what I kind of <laughs> went towards, you know. Um, I don't know if that was the best career advice I've ever got. Probably was the worst. <laughs> but, you know, that's what I ended up doing. And so, you know, moved out here to uh, Texas. Used to be a manager for Walmart. Uh, got out here and I didn't like it. And then I went on a journey of various careers. So I think I worked in probably about nine different industries from uh, within business, mm-hmm. did some things with uh, construction, uh, did some things uh, working in the tax uh, sector, done some things working at the uh, higher education sector, uh, did my own thing for about two years or so. Then I ended up working for a mortgage company. And then I decided to just finally go and get my certification to be a teacher um, because I actually I wanted to teach uh, college students. Oh, really? So you're planning on older? Uh, you know, I don't. I think in my next career field, I'm going to end up going back to what I originally wanted was to, to be a therapist. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, my, my original goal was to, to be a marriage and family therapist. I have kind of that pathway I want to get into. Um, Psychology. I'm interested in it's, uh, human development, family studies. 
Yeah. It's kind of like counseling too. Yeah, yeah. You know, my my wife is a counselor. Um, say I, I went to school to kind of go down that route, and then you, you never know, man. Life kind of throw a few curves at you. You you get married. You have kids. I have three. Mm-hmm. My oldest son graduated from Townview Law, uh, twenty twenty. Oh. And my daughter is a junior at Skyline right now, uh, horticulture. And so and my youngest, you know, he's an IT guy, but he's, he's in eighth grade. But yeah, you know, when you, it's good to kind of have ideas on what you want to do starting out with. Mm-hmm. Uh, be flexible, mm-hmm. right? Because you never know what opportunities will come across your path. But as always, if you, if you have an idea and then you kind of got a, a plan for what you want to do, whatever decision you make is going to work out. Yeah. Um, it's just a journey. Life is a journey. Yeah, well, what you said about being flexible, I, I really listen to that a lot because I feel right now, especially since we're all seniors, oh, everyone's yeah. like trying, kind of hunkering down, trying to have a set plan. And I think, you know, that's that's okay, you know, to have, you want to have a, somewhat of a plan of a layout of what you want to do in the future. But I think it's also important to keep in the back of your mind that it might not plan out the way you thought. So like how plan you were saying, uh, you planned out a different career than what you're in right now, or currently, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, you, anytime you have a plan, plans are always good. Mm -hmm. Because what plans do, they keep you focused, Mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, you're working what, you know, you think is required or what you found out to help execute the plan. And then somewhere, a new opportunity uh, pop up, you know, and I think one of the business terms that we use is about, it's called opportunity cost. Yeah. Right, where you know one opportunity is going to cost you the opportunity of another opportunity, you know, kind of paraphrasing that. So, but you know, ultimately, as long as you got a plan, you're in a good place because a lot of kids do not have plans. If you do not have a plan, (laughs) that's not a bad thing, right? Now you can kind of go on the exploration, kind of see what it is you want to do, but at some point, you're going to need to put a plan together. Mm So now that you've given us, you know, a big overview, I want to kind of rewind and mm-hmm. th- dissect a little, get more to specific. So starting back to when you were in high school, you know, can you tell us, like, what type of kid were you in high school? Like, were you, you know, really into sports, really into uh, another activities? Like, what type of person were you back then? Okay, so who, who's all listening to this podcast, right? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a loaded question, man. Um, you, can, I, you can answer what you can. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. hey, you know what? It's all good. I was a very big band guy. Oh, uh, okay. I was band was my thing in my hometown. You know, there was no one had ever heard of DECA and FBLA and and these different organizations. I think we had uh, maybe FFA mm-hmm. uh, on campus, but and then we had FCA. You know, uh, primarily for the athletes. But I was band, mm-hmm. and I was very good. Yeah. Uh, I was one of the top band, top baritone players in the state. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I was I was a low brad all day, right? Um, but man, you know, I I, I kicked it. Mm-hmm. Like I had my friends. You know, we were we were big Dragon Ball Z fans. We helped everybody else kind of get on that Dragon Ball train. <laughs> and then after that, I was always in the wind. So you know, the, the thing about small towns like Dallas. You know, five, you can just drive five minutes and you're pretty much in another city, you know, almost per se, right? Because of the way the neighborhoods are. Uh-huh. State of Mississippi is not like that, right? You drive five minutes, you're in darkness. Yeah. And then you got to <laughs> go about another 20 to 25 minutes to find the nearest town to get back to some light. And so we were always what we call town hopping. Oh, okay. Uh, town hopping uh, during the weekdays. And then on the weekends, I was in the club. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I mean, you know, I'm gonna be honest about it. So I don't know, y'all might have to do some editing, you know. But that's that's what we did, man. It, it, it was just a different place and a different time. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. So yeah, like uh, like I was talking about earlier, we're in like our senior year. People are like stressing out over who they are or like what they're gonna be or the type of person they are. And do you think it, uh, you were set as a person in high school? Do you think you know we can relax a little bit? You still got a lot a long way to go. Well, you know, I come from a background where my parents didn't graduate high school. My mother didn't go past the uh, eighth grade. My father didn't go past the tenth. And then they had to go back later on and get GEDs and obtain, uh, you know, certifications. My dad has always been an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was fortunate enough, man, to kind of see his business uh, energy and his drive. And I'm the youngest of five. 
So I got to witness all my other siblings and kind of things they did and best practices and opportunities. And I used that to motivate me. So my senior year, you know, I knew that I was going to go to college. Uh-huh. Uh, I knew I wanted to go for psychology because I was fresh off of a psychology class and a sociology class. But the rest of that, you know, just kind of was up in the wind. Well, okay. What it's going to look like uh, mm-hmm. as a first generation student to graduate from college. It's a, uh, it's different. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you want to be that trendsetter for your family. Uh, okay. well, yeah. What was something that you learned from college that made your experience overall good? That I learned from college? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I learned a lot of things mm-hmm. from college. Uh, ooh. The main thing, I guess, is I need to take my finances much more serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Because uh, I made a lot of terrible financial decisions in college. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, around that time, I started in 99. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, at Mississippi State, as soon as you get on the campus, by the way, MSU is a beautiful school. As soon as you got on the campus, though, Visa, Discover, and MasterCard were sitting outside of the student union with Uh tables for you to sign up and get credit cards. Uh And I had two of them. Oh. (laughs) I I, I went and got two credit cards. I told my brother, we're going to go buy us some leather coats. Oh, you were living. Um, I didn't have no job at the time, right? So I instantly ran up the value of those cars in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of learned the next few years the consequences of that decision. (laughs) So, you know, I was fortunate to take a couple of business classes in college, and that kind of redirected me on my finances. And so I got a a better grasp on finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the biggest thing I took away from college is finance. We need to learn that, too. We need to learn yeah. to <laughs> We're yeah. almost there, and we need to learn how to figure out how to pay for college, what's the steps to take, scholarships, grants, uh-huh. before loans, May or I, credit cards. You have your, uh, you know, use your counselors on campus. You know, that's what they're here for is to kind of help guide and advise you guys and, you know, and talking about that process. And then, you know, there are other programs, you know, that can help educate you in regards to, you know, federal aid, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, you always want to try to avoid student loans. Student loans has a very negative uh, perception uh, in our society, mm-hmm. and rightfully so, you know, because it wasn't done right. Uh, but student loans do afford opportunities for you to change the lives of your family. You know, mm-hmm. I would, at the end of the day, man, you know, I would rather be sitting in a nice house with nice air conditioning, with a nice car, you know, figuring out, you know, paying back my bills as opposed to sitting down in the rough trying to figure out how yeah. I'm going to pay mm-hmm. my bills. Uh-huh. Um, and so that's kind of what some of us learned, you know, through student loans. And now you got a lot of options. And people are throwing money at you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's just up to take advantage of it. Yeah, you got to like. take advantage of it. Uh-huh. And, and you got to be the one to go out here and try to find it. Like money, it's not just going to fall on your doorstep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it requires a little work, a little research, but uh, just like anything, when you, when you put that time into it, it's very beneficial for you. Uh, I was fortunate enough to where I had Pell Grants, okay. and then I had a uh, minimum student loan. But we did Pell Grants, had maybe a couple of loans, and then the city that I lived in had another type of grant uh-huh. uh, just because of the area code. That So, you know, MSU tuition is not expensive, but it's a fantastic school. Yeah, that, I've looked into it. It looks really nice. You know, just yeah, the campus in general. Man, that campus is beautiful. Uh-huh. Yard, uh, tailgating on Saturday. I miss SEC country. <laughs> Looking forward to football season. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you worked at um, Sunset High School for a period, correct? Yeah. So can you give us, you know, a little bit of a story of how it was there and then how, you know, did that end up pushing you towards being a district coordinator now? Man, I got hired at Sunset High School to, to run the school store. That's, oh. they, they tricked me. That's what they told me in the interview, right? You know? Aww. And so I get to the school on the first day, and, uh, you know, one of the teachers out there was like, hey, you know, you have a, a work-based learning program called Career Prep. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, did, did they tell you that you have a, uh, a school store? Like, yeah, I got to run that. Well, you know you're also the DECA advisor. <laughs> Where did what that come that? into my you know, interview? Right? Like, you know, oh, and you're teaching these marketing classes. Oh, okay. And then I find out that I didn't even have the correct certification to teach the marketing classes. So the principal, oh. you know, got hired after I did at the time. And then she came to me that next semester and was like, hey, 
you know, man, had I been hired here before you, you probably wouldn't have had a job. But neither here nor there, I need you to go get this certification for marketing because if you don't, your students aren't going to get credit uh -huh. for these classes. So I had to go and get another mark, another certification uh, just to make sure that we were in compliance. And then after that, it was on and popping, you know. Uh, Got rolling. You oh, know, yeah, man. I, everything. I, yeah, man. Once I, I learned what DECA was mm -hmm. and I was able to start kind of building that program and, and I, you know, I was, I'm already retail, so I reorganized the store. Man, we were we were international competitors for five years. Oh, so wow. you got something on the map in terms of DECA, you know? Oh, man. I mean, we were traveling every November and every April. Going to state and national? Going, man, going to the, we used to go to the power trip. Uh, it was in Washington, D.C. One year they had it down in Austin. One year it was in Philadelphia. One year it was in Baltimore. Uh, we ended up going out to Orlando, Florida for ICDC, uh -huh. Anaheim, California. I mean, we were just traveling, and then just kind of rotate back through. Uh -huh. Hit up Disney World, hit up Disneyland, uh -huh. Universal Studios. Um, man, I am an advent CTSO. Had our first district uh, VP on campus, and it was beautiful. Uh -huh. and so that's, that's how I ended up as a district coordinator, uh, really building that program and, and working with our Academy of Finance at the campus. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. now, now that you had entered the education, that's what ended up leading you towards becoming a district coordinator, pushing you? Yeah, well, you know, I had a coordinator who had just got promoted uh, to a, a, a district, a director position in another uh, DIS, and another in, uh, ISD, and I wanted to do what she did for me. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, the best thing for me to do was try to pay it forward now to other teachers. And so uh, that's pretty much how I ended up in my new role. I want to be, a, I think, a fruitful life is best spent in the service of mankind. Uh -huh. so we're all here to be of service to other people. Uh, you can never get so set in your ways and thinking that it's all about you. You know, you do well, and then you help bring up some others. So that's mm -hmm. what that's what my trajectory of my life has been, so I want to do the same for other people. So I know you oversee a lot of teachers, and I want to figure out how you manage it all, and how do you divide up the responsibilities and tasks that you have? I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> Big yeah. old thing. I got, a, I, got a, I got an Excel and a Google sheet that has all of the contact information and all the teachers and what they teach and where they're at. And whenever I get issues, I put it there. And I just use that to help me stay organized. Mm -hmm. I'm an organizer, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, I'm not very good with clutter. If I walk in and I yeah. see clutter, I got to organize. <laughs> I can do any work. And so, um, yeah, I use that. You know, time management is always going to be one of those things that, you know, we can all improve. But, you know, everybody has, you have to, you have to figure out what your system is, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't look the same. But as long as your system works for you and, and keep anxiety off your desk and keep you able to, you know, organize and move forward, that's all you can ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for um, me in the district, it was a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, what made you choose to work at Dallas ISD? Yeah, like, what, did yeah. you get any benefits or... Well, I mean, man, what made me choose to work at Dallas ISD? Dallas ISD is always hiring teachers. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, education is just one of those areas. It's always in demand, uh, and it's short on supply right now. So, you know, it's, it's like anything. I, I looked at a couple of school districts, but, you know, ultimately this is the one that uh, I believe God directed my path towards mm -hmm. and opened up the doors for me to be here. And so... You know, who am I to go against that wheel? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, that's how I ended up with the district. And can you tell us, like, an average? I know you do a lot of things, but on a typical day, what do you start? You know, what are tasks throughout the day? How does it, how does it all play out? Well, it depends on if it's Monday, Friday, or Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, and Thursday, right? Okay. Um, right now, in the beginning of the school year, our, my priorities is trying to help campuses and teachers make sure that they have the right curriculum resources, mm -hmm. uh, that they understand effective lesson planning and lesson engagement, and then reviewing, you know, campus needs as far as technology goes. So, you know, in the first few weeks of school, we spend a lot of time out actually trying to go and visit campuses and talk to teachers oh, okay. and, and see what that is. Because we got to help teachers. You know, we talk about laying foundations, mm -hmm. so we want to make sure teachers are set up right with their foundations, right? Nothing, not perfect, but at least, you know, you have the, the basic needs for you to be able to, to begin to build. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And Monday and, and Fridays is normally at me. 
because we get a lot of emails and a lot of follow-ups and a lot of other things that we have to manage too. So, uh, you know, try to structure it in such a way that we can try to tackle everybody and, and still, you know, at the end of the day, go home and, and not pull our hair out. Okay. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of it, so I'm trying to keep <laughs> as much as I can right now, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where do you see the CTE program in the next five to ten years? Dallas ISD is real strong, man. We've, you know, been growing. And so right now, you know, like with all of you, you know, students having to declare endorsements and, you know, sign up for your programs of study, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, making sure that you're able to complete that four-year track so that you can obtain that that program of study by the time you graduate. Then then aside from that, you know, you got to facilitate your your P-TECH schools and making sure that they're taken care of and, and those students have what's needed to succeed. You got the career institutes. Right for the kids who are wanting to go towards, you know, more of those trade types. We need more yeah. people in in architect and construction. We, we need more people in HVAC, uh, you know, in those skills. Uh, and then of course, you know, the magnet programs. Right. I mean, you guys, I've always considered y'all kind of the top of the line of all the students. Like anybody oh. just can't come to town, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, it's a different thing around here, man. And so. Uh, supporting them and, and making sure that these programs uh-huh. are flourishing. Like in the next five years, you know, I, I can only imagine really what that's going to look like. Um, you know, so, but I do know that CTE mm-hmm. uh, is a growing thing. You know, we talked about finance in college, mm-hmm. you know, and so we want to make sure that kids have a better understanding of those career and technical uh, program so that way you know what your options are. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a matter of kind of what that may look like. Right now is building up career institutes, uh, making sure that the P-TECs and early colleges are set up appropriately and uh, provide opportunities for you guys at the magnet and comprehensive schools. Mm-hmm. What would you say has been your greatest accomplishment in your career? Being married for 19 years. Yeah, I've been with my wife since uh, July the 28th. Of 2000, that's when we first started dating. Got married in 2003, and we've been together ever since. Mm-hmm. That is one of the greatest accomplishments mm-hmm. uh, that I've had. Cause I didn't see that coming at all. Uh-huh. You know, I got married in the prime. I was about to hit my prime. Oh, in college. she caught you. Yeah, she caught me. <laughs> she, she, she threw the hook out. You know, with these things, cause this this nice plate of spaghetti, and. Uh, <laughs> Like anybody that can cook, oh, we we gonna roll. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's my greatest accomplishment. I'm just, you know, I, I would love to tell you it has something to do with my career. I would love to tell you that is even my kids. I love, I, I love my kids, man. But none of that would have transpired. And, you know, I had to find a soulmate, mm-hmm. and so she's made me a helped me be a better man. Well, yeah. we want to wrap this up, but last but not least. What would be some advice you want to give to our high school seniors? You know, man. As we finish out. Yeah. Uh, you know, my advice to you right now is just enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Life is going to happen. You're going to get your chance to pay some bills and talk to, you know, uh, some employers. All of that is going to happen. But, I mean, you're only 18, you yeah. know, once in your life. So, um, responsibly. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> yes, right? Of you know, don't, don't go out here and do nothing stupid. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of kids doing a lot of stupid things. Yes, you know, learn what your options are. Don't be afraid to ask questions, mm-hmm. and don't be afraid to uh, challenge your own thinking. Okay, um, the only way you're ever gonna grow, man, is if is if you're able to ask questions and, and challenge your thinking. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's my, that's what I try to give to my kids, man. Uh, I tell my son, and then I know y'all we don't about to be on time. So, you know, it's really three things that you should consider. Um, If anybody's ever trying to share advice with you, they're either going to tell you something that is good for you and you need to know it and you should pay attention. They're going to give you a whole bunch of fluff that has nothing to do with you, but you still, they took the time to talk to you. So just be courteous and allow them to say their piece. Or they're going to say something to you that might not be applicable to you right now, but later on, the light bulb mm-hmm. is going to go off. You're going to say, oh, you need to store that piece of your information. Uh, okay. Um, but if, if you're able to do those things, you, you're going to grow. All right. Well, awesome. thank you for thank you know, you sharing so everything. You know, give us all this information. Yes. Well, that's going to wrap up this portion of the interview. 
We're going to be back with our Hot Topic segment. I mean, we're fine. Local Global global News. Sorry. (laughs) So catch us on the other side of the break. Yo, what's up, KZ and your family? Currently enjoying the show? But don't leave us just yet. We'll be right back after this short break. Breaking news, KSBM Radio. Our host will be right back with local and global news. So make sure to stay tuned. Yo, what's up, KSB and family? Currently enjoying the show? But don't leave us just yet. We'll be right back after this short break. Breaking news, KSBM Radio. Our host will be right back with local and global news. So make sure to stay tuned. Yo, what's up, KSBM family? Currently enjoying the show? But don't leave us just yet. We'll be right back after this short break. Breaking news, KSBM Radio. Our host will be right back with local and global news. So make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back, KSBM Radio, to the Voice of Tommy. I'm your host, Jody. I'm Mo. And KB. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be talking about global and local news. So our first story is about a vegan mom who gets life in prison following the death of her son from malnutrition. So for those of you who want a little explanation of that, malnutrition mm-hmm. is, you know, when you're not being getting enough nutrients properly, which is, you know, not either not having enough to eat or sometimes people are eating enough but not eating the right things. So you're not getting the important dietary stuff, you know. And so with being vegan, as you guys know, you can't eat any animal products. Mm-hmm. And, I'll, you know, animal products do have a lot of things that the human body needs. And you can get those from being vegan. It's just that you got to... Supplement them the mm-hmm. right way. Yeah. There's so, other things to mm-hmm. cha- switch out me from. Yeah, so it's like not impossible. But to give a little bit more, more information on this lady. So mm-hmm. Sheila O'Leary, she was 38. She was convicted of six charges in June. So first degree murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter, child abuse, and two counts of child neglect. So both of her and her husband, who are both strict vegans, they fed their 18-month only f- real fruit, raw fruits and vegetables. And, you know, obviously this Personal. didn't go well yeah. because the baby unfortunately ended up passing away. And she's currently in jail awaiting, you know, to be ch- actually charged with these things. But uh, when they found the child, apparently it was, uh, unfortunately it was like super malnourished, you know, not in a good state at all. And so, I mean, after being investigated, they did determine that it was because of the malnutrition and the child died, they ended up passing away. So now, I think, do y'all believe that she should have waited till they were older? Because I'm, I feel like at that age, it's good to have fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I That's feel like to help your body, you shouldn't force someone to do something that you do. Well, it's a kid. That's true, but it's, it's just a, a diet thing. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't see a problem of her uh, putting her child on a, a vegan diet if she had known what she was doing, which clearly she didn't, yeah. you know? Because, you know, I've had friend, I have friends who are vegan, and, like, I feel like people hear vegan, and they think of, like, just gray, like, fake food. or just yeah. Oh, like stuff. tofu? Yeah, like yeah. tofu, stuff that doesn't taste good. But he'll pull out his lunches and be like, dang, <laughs> like, it's really good. And, you know, he'd get all his nutrients or whatever, and he's, like, six foot, so clearly, you know, he's not lacking anything. And so I think when you do it right, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't see any reason for her not to do it if she had done it right, but she didn't, you know? Well, I think that, I mean, it's your kid. You get to <laughs> feed them whatever. Yeah. I feel like maybe they needed more than fruits and vegetables. Um. Usually, baby, but that's a eighteen month. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so they ha- have breast milk, uh-huh. fruits and vegetables. That's when they usually start eating. 
finger that, foods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't see how the, they would get malnutrition. Maybe it was just the baby's body, not. Oh, well, seriously? Maybe um, it wasn't her fault after all? No. Maybe I am. Uh, it, it, it was her fault. How is it her fault? Because she was not giving him enough protein, nutrients but for I mean, a baby. Whenever you're a baby and you give them baby food, isn't that what their baby food is anyway? Like, isn't it just like or vegetables? Breast milk. Like, yeah. Well, they, it said that he was breast milk. No that's it. So that's where you get your protein, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not a baby eating chowing down on steak, so <laughs> I I don't know. Like you're starting to make me think because that, that's also, a normal baby diet. Kids don't eat meat. Parents don't let them eat meat till they're old enough to uh-huh. actually chew and swallow. Yeah. So like, honestly, I don't think it's her fault. <laughs> In a way, um, so it's the baby's fault. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Hey, maybe that baby just wasn't strong enough. I mean, he weighed only 17 pounds. which yeah, 18 uh, months? Oh. 17 pounds, which only a seven-month-old baby would weigh. And he's an 18 month 18 months is a year and, what, six months. It's a year and a half. You're saying 17 pounds is good for that? No. <laughs> yeah. That's what a seven-month-old okay. baby weighs. How, old, uh, how much did he weigh when he was born? Do you know? No. no. But not that much. Babies are what? When they're born? Like, the biggest babies when they're born are like what? I was eight pounds. Yeah, that's the average. So he was probably like six, maybe. Exactly, so. Never mind. He was like way too light. Yeah. In November 2019, the medical examiner determined the cause of the boy's death was complications of malnourishment, including dehydration Hmm? of the liver and swelling of the hands, feet, and lower legs. Do you think oh, that he already a, had, uh, what is it called? Something going on with him already? I feel like a it wasn't that, him. It was like, like he was not fed right. That's basically it. How is it from dehydration when he literally had? Okay, when you're a baby, you drink more than just breast milk. You drink water. You sometimes drink orange juice, they apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. They probably gave him water. I'm well, trying it to says out. that they only fed him breast milk. So mm-hmm. I think the thing is, he might have been getting too much of one type of these too types much. of foods. And they said it was raw vegetables. Yeah. So like, well, aren't all vegetables raw? Yes. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess unless you like cook, eat, you cook broccoli or whatever, some stuff like that. But maybe uh, I think that's what it was. It's the type, the amount of the food. And he was only getting one type of food. Because it ended up affecting his liver. Mm-hmm. And so I'm guessing his body, you know, couldn't process all that, that only that type of food for so long. And that sucks that his feet and hands are swollen. Mm, I feel bad. Mm-hmm. But, you know what? I, this is going to, like, add to the whole vegan hate thing. Because pe- people who are vegans get so much hate already. I don't what? know. Well, it's their way of how they want it. What do you mean? Um... Like, it's their life. They get to choose how they want to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, there's different things to substitute meat or whatever, eggs. But I feel like we also need those things to help us grow and, you know, that we need protein in our body and all that stuff. Uh-huh. But I just, you know, people, vegan, people, whenever they say they're vegan, like, that instantly already gave me fun of. <laughs> like, like, like to my friend, he, he'd always get roasted. Like, whenever he put on his lunch. Even though it was good. But because it was vegan, they gave me fun of. And, you know, then you add st- stories like this. It's just like, uh, they're not helping themselves. Like, in terms of pushing their they diet. They have some good foods. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I had this, was it, meat crumble, but it's not real. It was, like, veggie meat. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It, it tastes like real meat. I mean, I've had vegan burgers and stuff, and they're pretty good. Now, don't trust the ones from Burger King. (laughs) (laughs) They're cooked on the same grill as the burgers. (laughs) But, yes, they're living their life. I think the closest thing me eating as a vegan is a salad. But everyone needs that. Close enough. Yeah, (laughs) close enough. I just feel like, um, back to the lady, I feel like the... Do you think the punishment was fair? I don't think so. Because, I mean, she, they did, um, what's, they led to the baby's because death. also, it's not like she was trying to kill the baby. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I feel like it was still her fault. Also, if she was a new parent, I mean, parents have to figure things out. 
You can't, okay, but you can't figure things out. Let's baby time. Yeah, but How they, they already <laughs> had like four other siblings. And, and they, they were, were also, ma- yeah. No, they weren't fine. They were also malnourished. You just did it. And CPS had to take them away. Oh, really? Yeah. Dang, so the whole family. The whole, the whole family, yeah. It was just, it wasn't not just the baby. I feel like the parents were at fault and yeah, then they that, deserve If it's the whole being, family, then yeah, the punishment is, yeah. the punishment is just. Because I feel like it was just a kid when, you know, maybe like you said, it was uh, her being irresponsible and letting this happen but i don't know if that would be enough to, for the, all the punishment she got but like jody said if it's her whole family mm-hmm. you know going through stuff like that then i think it's justified mm-hmm. you still stand on what you said yes no <laughs> okay i mean I, I get what you're coming from because like you shouldn't people should be able to allow to like eat and raise their kids all they want yeah until it hurts them that's sure. that's my point of view I, I wonder if she knew that he was like from the swelling and everything, she knew it was malnutrition or maybe she just didn't think it was because of the food. Like yes. she, probably, she probably thought it was something See? else. No, I feel like the it would be really noticeable. If your ba- baby is swollen. Like come on, <laughs> and you still feed him raw fruit. No, uh, that's fruit on you. Raw. I blended it up. <laughs> uh, I don't, that's on her. It, 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 the thing is, um, because the the baby ended up dying, it's a like. If she had gone on, on to raise her ch- child as vegans and nothing ended up, nothing bad happening, then it would be perfectly fine. But she didn't Maybe do it the right have way. Waited for a certain age. Yeah, a that, certain age. It, it would probably been safer, and especially you know when kids are older, you know she can see if something's not going right. Mm-hmm. You know she can see that a lot quicker. So I feel like after hearing what Jody said, this punishment is just, and you know she deserves what, and the husband, the husband too, they both deserve what they got. All right, well, we're going to wrap up local and global news, and we'll be back with entertainment. This is KSBN Radio Sports and Entertainment section coming up, where we bring you the latest sports and the most entertainment going on around the world. So sit back (laughs) and enjoy. Welcome back, KSBN Radio listeners, to KSBN Radio, the voice of Townview. Jody got a little too excited. Started yeah. early. <laughs> All right, go you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Jody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mo. And I'm KB. And so now we're heading out to sports and entertainment. So starting off with sports, Serena Williams. You know, everyone's heard about her. Her career is sadly finally coming to a close no. after a huge, huge, huge streak of dominance and like mm-hmm. playing at such a high level. You know, she announced that at this year's Open will be her last. And everybody's coming out, you know, cheering on. It's cool to see all the celebrities in the stands, mm-hmm. yeah. especially for a sport like tennis. Because, like, <laughs> sure, tennis is pop, maybe not in America, but yeah, around the world. It's popular. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, a good sport. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, one of the good things, of, one of the great things about Serena is the amount of exposure she gave tennis. Because mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, in Europe and in other countries, you know, it, it's been pretty popular, but in America, not so much so. But when she came around, like. Especially a woman of color. Mm-hmm. She did really good. There's, oh, and her sister. Yeah. No, I didn't wait for Venus. Uh-huh, Venus. Yeah, like I feel like they both just gave a huge uh, cultural benefit to tennis. Mm-hmm. And also, um, like, because, like, I remember when Serena, she she always, get, she still does, getting criticized of she doesn't look like the other tennis players. You know, she's yeah. bigger. Yeah. She's, a, she's a black woman. You know, she doesn't look like anybody else. And yet she's still so dominant. And, you know, I, I just have so much respect for her. How many years has she gone? So it says she started in early 2000s. She yeah. started, no, she started before that. She yeah, started in the late 19, 90s. Late 90s. 1990s. Yeah, so 80. 20 years of her being That's a long time. really, really good. And she's still in shape and everything. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But um, that has, like, made me question, or I've seen the question online, too, of people asking if she's not only the GOAT of tennis, but the GOAT of all sports because yeah. of you, how much she's done. I wouldn't say of all sports. Yeah. Tennis, yeah. Of tennis, yeah. But she I do. Kill, she kills. Yeah. Uh, in her recent match, she went up against the second ranked best player, and uh-huh. she won. Oh yeah, she won really good too. Like yeah. she in the final round, she pretty much dominated. She's be fighting this last time, she's. I'm pretty sure she's gonna miss, win most of the match. I really hope she yeah. makes it all the way, but I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? Because like it's such top talent. 
And old she age. is old. She's not in her prime anymore. And like, and it would be like such a perfect storybook ending for her, like her final season to win it. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, because she's not in her prime anymore. These people are, and but we'll see, we'll see. I'm, I'm still she's really. She's still a main person that most people know. Yeah, because I rather guess. than the other one, <laughs> I don't I pay don't attention know. to them. Yeah. <laughs> I just pay attention to. I just pay attention to Serena, Serena Williams and her sister. Uh-huh. Yeah, That's but pretty much it. I think there is a case of her being the oh. GOAT of all sports, though. Yeah. Because, like, let's, if you want to bring about accolades, she's won hundred. She's won, not hundreds. She's won a lot of, uh, what's it called, Open. She's won a lot of Grand Slams. Um, she she has, won the Olympics yeah, also. Yeah, the Olympics. She has the accolades. She has the length. You know, mm-hmm. she's done this for over, over 20 years or close to. And outside of the course, she has a cultural impact. So mm-hmm. why not? Is my, Why can't she be the GOAT? What's the case against? I mean, she literally has, she checked off every box, you know. And coming from but a spot where she wasn't set up, all sports. I mean, yeah, because she's coming from. She also she was set up. Tennis like tennis was against her. Like she set up. She wasn't set up to be this prodigy person that she was. She wasn't you know the typical uh, white slim uh, prodigy tennis player that grew up. She had a different background. She faced tons of, of discrimination. You know, just people not rooting for her, not getting the sport. And she still has this huge uh, period of success. Like, why not? Why can't she be the girl? Have y'all seen the movie King Richard? I, oh, I need to watch it. I need to watch it. I need to watch it. It's mm-hmm. a good movie. It basically explains her background coming up as a child. Mm-hmm. And to, I think it's just her childhood, but maybe it goes to her adult life and the things that she had to face. Yeah. I need to watch that movie so bad. It's been on my watch list. But, okay, that's going to wrap up that. Let's move on to our next uh, segment in entertainment. We're going to talk about Marvel and the huge waves of criticism they've been getting over you know, their so recent cool. shows. So, as you guys know, over the past couple of years, they've been dropping a lot of shows on Disney+, Plus. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, the quick series, kind of different superheroes. And I feel like when they first started, they, they're really well-received, like WandaVision. Yeah, WandaVision and Loki. Was big. Yeah, um, they, were, mm-hmm. they were, like, received well, you yeah. know. But I feel like out of, ever since like a couple months ago, they've just been getting a lot it's of hate. Trying like to go on down. Yeah. Like, it's not as creative. I it, mean, they come from the comic books, so it's not. They try to follow the storyline of the comic books, but they also it's yeah, not it's like that thing. It's not that good. But they try to make it creative. Yeah. yeah so like with their recent one, She Hulk. Um, it's <laughs> I've been seeing so many like TikToks and tweets of people like just completely. Hating on it, like mm-hmm. the CGI, especially the CGI. Oh yeah, it's like, it's really yeah, it's bad. bad. <laughs> and especially like I could give it a pass if it's like some small, some small uh, company or whatever. But it's Marvel. Why is the CGI looking like it's from some cheap video game manufacturer? Like you can't, you can't give them a pass when you're this huge of a company, and we know There's you have like the budget. Marvel, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Like all their movies are all always good. Maybe you said it's from Netflix. Oh, it's on, uh, it's on Disney Plus. Plus. Oh, I was going to say, if it's on Netflix, then they have a, line, a certain amount of money to use that. But um, it's like, uh, what's that new one? Miss Marvel? Have y'all uh, seen I it? I haven't watched it. Or have you seen the trailers? Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be as good and either. I, I feel like another problem is they're dropping so much content. like Because well, people ask they're for content all the time. They're not taking their time to yeah. actually. Like, I feel like they're picking quantity over quality right now yeah. and <laughs> i don't think it's working because like it's just unacceptable like when to put out a product like that being marvel like come on you well, i mean they're trying to put out more mm-hmm. people because you know in the avengers and stuff marvel they cut some people those yeah, people the, out like people their are, story has ended yeah so they're trying to bring in more people and characters it's not good how they're bringing them in. Yeah, like they need to have a bang or something. Yeah, like if they come in bad like this, like people aren't gonna like them from the start. Mm-hmm. So it's I feel like they they gotta that with these next episodes, the next shows that come out, they gotta kick it up because I, I think like, in the following episode, Megan the Stallion appears on it. Really? Yeah. As what? As this like a time. backup character, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it's for the whole show or maybe just that episode. She should have been She Hope. Oh, <laughs> that I can see it. Yeah, I can see it too. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I'm probably have to actually watch this. Maybe 
Not too bad. Oh, but I feel like it's kind of the movies too, because I feel like. Mm-mm. I think it's mostly mostly the Doctor show. Strange. I was so hyped for Doctor Strange, and then I watched it, and I was like, dang. People said they liked it. Or have you watched it? I feel like it was no, just because I don't I care about it. Doctor Strange as much. Um, I feel like it was very um. Kitty, like maybe I'm maybe we're just growing up. Is it maybe that's it? That, that that's why we don't like Marvel anymore because we're just growing up. No, because I still like the Avenger movies. How they did that's true. I yeah, love like the old War, ones. Yeah, like I'll rewatch those. So oh, yeah, you're right. Captain America's. Mm-hmm. You watch Captain America? Wait, oh, I thought you meant Captain Marvel. My bad. I was like. <laughs> Captain Marvel. Did you watch Captain Marvel? Yes, that was a good one too. You liked it? Did you like they it? Tried I didn't to, think. It, I think it got overrated. They try to add more humor into all of the. I think it's like one of the most hated Marvel movies. Yeah, but to be honest, I Captain, think it got overrated. No. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, it it is one of the most hated. Like. That's because she was a woman. Yeah. To be time. honest, yeah. They're like probably. what? They figured out it was a woman. Uh-huh. But what about Black Widow? It didn't get as much hate. Black, Black Widow, it was really okay. good. That's oh, I like that movie. Good. It was yeah. so funny. Yeah. Like her first movie, it was. You can see how her character changed because she was being sexualized. That's true. First, yeah. And then actually, she became more independent. Yeah, she like actually had her own background, her own motivations type. Her own little relationship with Hulk. But that's okay. So you guys are right because. Uh, I was saying, you know, maybe we're just growing up and, you know, it's just a Marvel isn't targeted towards us anymore. But you're right, because I can rewatch the old movies and still enjoy them. Like, they're still good. Mm-hmm. But I can't rewatch, you know, recent ones. Like, I, I watched the new Thor movie, and it was pretty funny. But Maybe it's the actors. <laughs> cause it's just off. I don't know. It's just... It's, it's not like what it used to be. Uh-huh. And it's, I feel like people will say, oh, it's not what it used to be to about a lot of things. They're just like, that's just nostalgia talking. Mm-mm. But in this case, it really is not what it used to be. The quality has gone down. It's not just people speaking from, it, things were better before because, you know, nostalgia. It actually, I, there's actual proof. Yeah, they need to take their time mm-hmm. more before they put out more shows. Because I know there's a lot of characters in the Marvel universe. Uh-huh. Yeah. And... Yeah, I think that, so. However, they bring the next person up, yeah. they need to do better. Mm-hmm. So, like with the new Black Panther movie that's coming up, how she's gonna replace it? That that, that needs one looks, to be good. That, that needs one, to be good. Like, I feel like you, it's it will be good. I'm I think start so too. crying when it says <laughs> when it comes the opening scene. I know. And, like basically, it's a tribute to Chadwick Boseman. Uh-huh. Like if they drop the ball on that, <sighs> I wonder what their excuse. Is. Like, you, you, they can't not mess They can't. They, they can't mess it up. If they that do. trailer was amazing. Uh-huh. The song with Kendrick Lamar. Oh yeah, that, it was really good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I think that's I'm a good. Watch it. Like they, 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 they can really use that to pick themselves back up. You know. But also, they said so. The sisters actually in comic books is supposed to take over uh-huh. for Black Panther. Uh-huh. So I think we see more of her. What's her name? I can't remember. But she takes over. I'm fine with the sister taking over. I feel like some people are like off. Oh, uh, they're hating on the sister taking over, but like that's just like internet people, you know, just hating yeah. on her just because she's a woman. Like this is literally the only reason. It all comes from the mar- the comic books. Anyway, yeah, they just don't know. <laughs> that's coming out this year, right? No, 2023. <sighs> well, this year, yes, technically. At, no. Wait, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean technically this year? No. Do you know like what month? It's November. November yeah. but I thought November it was th- next I thought year? It, I thought it was this November. Yeah. Are you sure? Movies usually, when they mm-hmm. have the trailer, it always be a year after. Yeah, but I thought it was and just we had to wait so long. So if I had to wait so long, this better be <laughs> it better good. Be good. <laughs> I feel like it will be good. I hope it will be good. That's what I said about Doctor Strange. And then I watched it and I was so disappointed. What do y'all like so much about Doctor Strange? He's cool. He does this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you mean he's cool? I already started liking him because of the... In, of him in Infinity War and in that in the Thanos saga, that's why he started liking him. And then uh, he would pop on Spider Man, but he got his own movie. I was like, yes, finally, and it wasn't good. Y'all believe that Spider Man should stop making movies? Or yeah. Y'all like? I don't like Spider Man as much. I feel like it should stop. Like, there's been enough movies. I like Spider Man. What are you guys talking about? I like him too. It's just like was good. It was good. Well, I didn't even watch it, but I heard it was good. It was good. 
Oh, okay. So, uh, prediction. It is what kind of race? I knew it. I knew it. Okay. Miles Morales. They should make a live action. Though that's gonna be hard though, because the Miles Morales movie was so like animated and unique. I feel it'd be hard to transfer that to live action. That one was really good. I think if they have the right like actor. I, I don't actually I don't think they should Yeah, I, I think disagree. it should they they, they, they should leave it alone. Because it was it was so com- no, not leave it alone. Like it should make another movie, but I think it should stay animated. Yeah. True. That like, was really good. So him more grown up. Uh-huh. Because it was, the animation, like that was such a big part of the movie and like the different scenes, the different art styles. So I don't there's no way you could transfer that to a live action version. And if they do make another movie, I hope they keep Post Malone. Because when he sang Sunflower, oh, yeah, that, that movie was like, it, it was basically made for the That movie. song is okay. I'm tired of that song. Really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, I thought I, I, I give it a good like beat. It. I'm tired of it. <laughs> like, there's so many. You could have picked another song. I'll just. Yeah, so I feel like in general with these upcoming projects that they're dropping, they just have to pick it up. Because if not, like, I'm going to just stop watching, like, Marvel in general. Like, I really am. My uh, production says Miles Miles Brown. Oh, Miles Brown from Blackish as Miles Morales. Yes. That okay? Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, like, I can see that. But it's just I don't. How are they supposed to like make a live action version? Like, how are they supposed to do that? It's just so it's so different. Yeah. And I think that's why it, it got so much praise because it was so different. True. Like it was so unique. That's what made people. So many people like it. So for them to make a live action, I don't know if it would. Transfer. Is there any other Marvel shows that are coming out? That are dropping? Out? They have or a lot of dropping. Uh, I think they have a Guardians of the Galaxy show dropping, right? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not watching that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they had a I'm Groot one, right? I'm not watching that. Yeah, that's Guardians of the Galaxy. But uh, I thought he had his own show. No way. <laughs> How is he going to get his own show? Okay, well, that's going to wrap up this show today, you know. First show back, started strong. Make sure to follow us on social media so you can catch up on our next upcoming shows. We have a lot. We have a lot of content coming, so you can't mm-hmm. miss it. Watch us on Facebook at KSBM Radio. Twitter at KSBM underscore TVT. Instagram and TikTok at KSBM Radio TVT. Also, follow us on YouTube and Twitch. Mm-hmm. You can just look up KSBM Radio. We'll be right there. Yeah. So, thank you for listening. Also, comment down below. Like the video. <laughs> No. <laughs> hey. Smash that like <laughs> if you Subscribe. Do it our videos. We'll do it back. Yes. We can collab. KSBM Radio times the viewers. Yes. So thank you guys for listening. I've been Mo. KB and Jody. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to KSBM Radio. The voice of Townview. My radio station. We hope you enjoyed the great content and great discussion, all from a student's perspective. Make sure to follow us on Twitter for the latest updates at KSBM underscore TVT or on Facebook at KSBM Radio. Add them on Facebook. Check them on Facebook. Take care.